<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Now in this exciting few series that we're going to have now is we're going to be building a Geardric Greatsword from the Skyrim Elder Scrolls games. Now this is going to be a giveaway at the Maker Central 2023 raffle thing that they do and I've promised them a six foot sword. So as you've just seen we've had this lovely wood delivered by the sponsor of this video, uh, Surrey Timbers. Uh, I'll tell you more about them later, but I need to get this all milled up. So this is gonna be a series of videos breaking it down into little bits so it makes it easier to watch. So in the first video is just milling this wood up. So I need to mill this to dimension and size that I need. So I'm gonna be using this one. So I've got oak, I've got walnut, and then for the handle, I've got tiger wood. Um, and then I think for the edge, I'm gonna drag my purple heartboard down and we're going to use purple heart on the edge instead of paduke this time, just to give it a little bit of contrast. Most of the milling is done for this one, um, but I now need to resort the purple heart, which is going to be interesting because this isn't the most powerful bandsaw in the world. So I managed, I've picked up a new um, blade for it. It is three TPI, I believe, um, from Tough Saw. Um, so links will be in the description below. Um, but I'm going to fit this one to this, and hopefully that will make this nice and well. But it's been a long time since I've set this bandsaw up. So it's going to take me a little while to figure all of that one out again. May have to watch um, Matt Easley's video again, I think. Okay, so small break for what we're doing because I've had a new toy arrive. So this is a programmable remote control outlet for a plug. So this is going to be used on my uh, extraction system, which means I don't have to keep walking all the way over there just to turn the Henry on. So I'm going to get this one out and see how it get, how it works. How, how do I one-handed? Okay, so plug and remote. So. Let's get this plugged in and we'll see how it works. Oh my God, it's so simple. So uh, on and off button. So now I don't have to walk all the way over there just to turn my vacuum on. Um, when I'm at the table saw and things like that, which means I won't leave the vacuum running randomly um, throughout the day when I finish doing my cuts on the table saw and can't bother to go and turn it off and do other things, which is amazing. So it's also got this nice little key ring. So I'm gonna attach this to my apron because I've got this little key ring holder thing here. Um, and yeah, this is gonna be so much easier. What I will remember to do though is actually turn the plug off when I finish, because I know that Keith, uh, Rag and Bone Brown, um, had an issue with it. Some like other remotes out in the world affecting his thing and turning it on, and it was on all night and all for a week, and then there was a potential fire. So I'm going to not do that. I'm going to turn my plug off after every single uh, day, and yeah, should be awesome. Right, let's get back to it. I also picked up this lovely little heater because it is very cold in this workshop sometimes. So that just. Uh, is going to keep me nice and toasty. I can feel it from here already. 
Oh, lovely. Um, so I'm going to put a link for all of these in my um, in the description if you fancy going for it because this one works so well. And my God, the heat this is putting out is lovely. I don't have any more clamps. Like, that's it. That's everything I've got. I hope this glues up okay. I think I'm gonna have to angle for a uh, clamp sponsor soon. Otherwise, this is gonna be really difficult to build anything this big in the future. Oh well, right. Let's let that dry. Hey guys, just want to take a second to talk about our sponsor of this video, Surrey Timbers. They are a family run business selling local and exotic hardwoods from around the world. They've been around for over 25 years in the timber trade and are absolutely amazing at what they do. Their knowledge is unbelievable. When I went there, I asked for advice, they helped, they showed me around, but you can collect, but you can also get them delivered as well for a small delivery fee. You can get anything that they offer delivered right to your door and it can't be any simpler. They have a master showroom with PAR and rough sawn timber in it and you can look and feel everything that's there. They also have a hobby section, a craft section and a live edge section as well. So thank you very much Brad and the guys at Surrey Timbers for sponsoring this video and making this build possible. I will see you at Maker Central and I can't wait for you to hold this lovely sword in your hand. The next morning. Hmm. Okie dokie, so this is all glued up now and I could, I could try and flatten this all myself, but I have a friend who has a workshop that's got one of those fancy machines where you push it through and it squares all four sides together. And that's gonna be a lot easier for me than trying to do it myself. So I'm gonna give it to him and he's gonna do that for me. So in a second, you'll see this board back in here all nicely squared all round um, and closer to the thickness I want. So let's try it, shall we? Oh shit. Oh, oh phew, sorry about that. It's back, it looks really good. Look at that, nicely squared, all round, looking perfect. Got a few little gaps here and there to fill, but that's not a big problem. Um, the problem would have been if I couldn't have got it square in the first place. So. What needs to happen now is, you'll see, I've got a little wee bit of a gap down here. So I need to fill that gap with something. So I'm gonna mill up some oak or something else because this is all gonna be tang. So it doesn't really matter what's in there, it's the tang of the thing. Uh, I'm gonna find some scraps, fill it, glue it all together again, and then this will be perfect and ready to go.
should be roughly dry so I'm going to get the clamps off, square off the edges and I'm going to run it through the thickness to try and get down to the final thickness of the sword. Um, this will give me an idea of how big this is actually going to be. So remember this is just the core of the sword. I've got walnut to go on the outside still and on the guard so it's going to be end up being a little bit thicker than this will finally be. But I'm going to aim for maybe 30 centimetres? No. Three centimetres. Thirty millimetres is what I meant. So we're going to leave this one here, uh, the main body of the blade's done, template bit is rough cut to give you an idea of how big it's going to be, and I will see you on the next video where we're going to be shaping this one into its rough shape, and then we can start milling the walnut, which is over there somewhere, in order to make the top section. So yeah, I will see you on the next video.